Hello friends! Welcome back! Um, in today's video, I am going through some of my old drugstore makeup favorites, and I'm seeing if I still like them. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. You'll have to see. So stick around and keep watching to see which old favorites are still favorites. And please take a, take a second to boop, subscribe. I would love to have you back on this channel. All right, let's get into it. First up is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow Foundation. This stuff, if you caught me back in 2016, 2017, whenever this first came out, I was all over it. I loved this stuff. So I'm really excited to see if I still love it. It has always, at least when I was using it before, it always looked so natural and, as it says, glowy. I have it in the shade 201 Classic Ivory, which, if my memory serves me correctly, when I was using it before, um, it was like slightly too dark, just a teeny bit too dark. Um, so let's see if I still feel that way. I'm using my sponge, don't look at it, it's a little, it's a little dirty. And I got that much, that might even be too much, but let's see. Okay, um, as you can see, it did not really at all um, cover my little visitor there, but um, in terms of like just providing a nice wash of color, um, A+. Plus. It really canceled out the redness that I have, uh, especially like in my temples and on my forehead, and really gave me a nice um, starting point for all of my other makeup. Yeah, wow, that looks nice, doesn't it? As I have mentioned before, my problem area is between my brows. Uh, for some reason, foundation tends to cling to the dry patches there, and it really looks perfect. It looks perfect. And as far as the color match goes, I actually think it looks pretty darn perfect, almost. Um, but you know, like right now I've got my winter pale on. So this is going to be a perfect summer shade for me. Cool, okay. I'm pleased with that. I'm happy to know that that is still a beautiful foundation. Next up, I want to move on to my eyes and I have this Revlon Colorstay Quad, little eyeshadow quad. Um, I have it in the shade 555 Moonlit. Um, whenever I owned this originally, I could not tell you the name of the shade that I had or, you know, the collection, um, but it was just very standard, neutral, typical. It had like browns and champagnes and tans, that kind of situation. Uh, when I bought this initially, I did not realize that these are all shimmer shades. Um, so I think I might do a one shadow look, maybe two, I'm not sure. Um, the lipstick that I have to try later is very deep and vampy, so I don't want to go, you know, cuckoo bananas with the, the eyeshadow. So um, what I'm going to do is, oh, you know what? Let me swatch these for you. Okay, so here is the shadow quad and here, <laughs> there we go. There it is on my hand swatched out. Um, I would say the only one that isn't really a performer is the darkest shade right up here. But actually the other three look decent. 
I'm surprised at uh, how decent these shadows are. Because um, I don't really... When I think of good drugstore eyeshadow, Revlon is not the brand that comes to mind. Um, that's just how it is. That's okay. They've got other things going on. So I think I'm going to get a brush again. Oops. Jeez. It comes with this little, you know, one of these little doodads. No one uses those. Anyway, I'm going to go into this shade and I'm going to put it all over the lid. And blend that out into the crease. I think I'm going to take that white shade um, and put it on the inner corner. I'm curious how that's going to look. Let me try that. That's nice. That added um, just a little bit more dimension to the eye. That's nice. It's really subtle, but pretty good. I think I am going to take um, this deeper shade, just very, very lightly put it on the outer part of the eye. Oop. That might have even been too much right there. Oh boy. It's funny, that darker shade, the darkest shade in this little palette, um, it did not swatch well at all, but Surprisingly, uh, showed up nicely uh, when used with a brush. I'm so, oh my god, I can't talk today. Pleasantly surprised. Um, this is this is a decent little palette, um, especially if you just want like a simple one shadow, two shadow kind of looks. Um, this is a great little quad to go with. Again, I have it in Moonlit, and they have like. I don't know, five more shade stories, color stories to go with that. Great. And I think those are only like seven or eight dollars for that little quad. Not bad. I want to clean up under my eyes and maybe try to cover this. And I have a classic, 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 if you know, you know. <laughs> it is the um, Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser Concealer Stick. <laughs> this has been on the scene for a while. Oh boy, I didn't realize that it was still um, taped up. <laughs> anyway, here it is. It has a little twisty top. Um, I prefer to, once I get the product out, I prefer to tap my finger onto the little sponge um, and then use it where I need it. But if you want to, you know, shoop it up and then immediately swipe, go crazy. Go nuts, whatever you want. Um, so I'm going to twist until product comes out and I will see you in about uh, five to 10 years. Okay, great. All right, we have product. Um, I should also mention I have this in, I believe the lightest shade, which is 110, 110. Okay, I've got some on my finger. This is a really beautiful formula that does not sink into lines or look um, cakey or anything like that. Um, but if you have extreme dark circles under your eyes, this alone might not um might not do it for you you may feel it's a bit lacking in its coverage it looks nice though for me right now looks good um okay let's see 
So on any other day, this would be enough coverage for me um, in terms of concealer. But this little son of a gun. <sighs> so I need to uh, bring out the, the heavy hitters. And for me, that is, oh my God, this is so old. I need to repurchase. This is the Makeup Forever Full Cover Concealer. And I have it in shade. <laughs> I could... I don't know. I want to say it's like shade five or four, um, but this bottle is so old that I couldn't tell you. Anyway, uh, a little goes a very long way. This is very full coverage, um, and I need it today for this little dude. I think that is as good as it's going to get. You know, it's just one of those days, it's just one of those times. It's okay. So, um, for mascara, you want to talk about like drugstore OG. This is, this is it. CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume Mascara. Listen, this was my go-to holy grail mascara for so many years. Like all through high school, all through college, this was it. I have not used this in so long. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Oh, and I just have it in black. Here we go. Just kind of like a fat little applicator. The formula seems drier than I remember. I don't know. I'm going to give it a whirl and I'll be right back. Well, I guess there's a reason why I have not revisited this mascara since college. Um, it's just kind of meh. Meh. It's okay. Um, it's very natural. Um, it gives you kind of like light, fluffy, natural, barely there kind of lashes, which uh, it's okay. It's not really my thing, but... Um, it's all right. I mean, if you or someone you know is new to makeup and they want to like ease into it, this is a good mascara for that purpose. Um, yeah, I don't think uh, it will be in my rotation. But you know what? Hey, we tried it. We tried. That's all we can ask, right? All right. Um, on to brows. I have the... NYX Micro Brow Pencil in Ash Brown. <laughs> I like just looked at it and I forgot. So it's just a pretty standard uh, brow pencil. Truly like nothing fancy, but if I remember correctly, it really gets the job done. Let's watch this for you really quick. It's pretty dry. Um, it reminds me of the ColourPop brow pencil that I really wasn't a fan of in terms of formula. Yeah, they're both pretty dry. This one's, a, it looks like a tad bit darker than this one. As you might remember, I did not like this one because of how dry it is, so I'm nervous, but you know what, let's, let's just get into it and try it out. So, <sighs> for a shade called Ash Brown, this is um, really warm in tone. It's okay, it's okay. I will say, um, Given how hard and dry the actual formula is, I'm pleasantly surprised with how easily it went on. Um, I just don't like how orange it looks on my brows. If that is coming across on camera the way I'm seeing it, it's okay. I think it's another one of those that I will keep it around if I'm in a pinch and I have nothing else, but um, it's it's not the one that I'll be reaching for as uh, my first choice. 
Wait. I mean, that's the nature of going back to old favorites, right? Like, you move on for a reason, you know? Okay. For blush, I have the Maybelline Fit Me blush, and I have it in mauve. I used to have this blush in a shade that was um, kind of similar to the NARS Orgasm blush, uh, just without the shimmer in it. I could not tell you the name of that blush. But um, if my memory serves me correctly, I did like the formula of the blush. So I'm excited to try it with this new shade that I haven't tried before. I don't have any bronzer to try. Um, so let's see if this blush is enough on its own. Ooh, okay, pigment. All right, let's see. Oh, now I'm scared. <laughs> Wow, that is, maybe, I, it doesn't really go with this look, um, but that is such a gorgeous spring color. Um, I'll swatch it for you in a second, but it's like um, a cool tone, kind of neutral blush. Um, and as you might be able to see right here, it does have a bit of shimmer in it, which I didn't realize initially. You know what? That is going to be so beautiful in the spring. Okay. Okay. We got a winner from this group. All right. Here it is swatched. Oh my God. If you can even see that. Very subtle very buildable. Um, honestly, if your skin is any darker than mine, I don't think this will work for you. Um, unfortunately, you, you might be spending like 30 minutes building it up. Um, but if you have fair or light skin, this is a really nice, um, natural, easy option. And as you, you can probably see on my hand, there is a little bit of shimmer which I don't mind, I'm a, I'm a fan of the shimmer, bring it on. So my last item to try out, um, I'm regretting the shade choice. <laughs> That's okay. It is the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream and I have it in Copenhagen. Listen, this used to be it, okay? These NYX little soft matte lip creams these are bomb, baby. Um, I don't know. There used to be, I'm sure it's still there. There was a NYX store in Union Square in New York City that I used to go into all the time. And they had a huge display of these and it was just, it was heaven. It was great. Um, from what I remember of this product, uh, oh wait, oh wait, does it still have that smell? It's like a vanilla cupcake smell. It's really nice. Um, I remember the color payoff is obviously like really great for these. And I remember them being comfortable, which when you have a matte lipstick, especially a liquid matte lipstick, um, they can tend to be very dry, which, you know, no one wants dry, crusty lips. No one wants that. So that's why I was really drawn to these because they were comfortable and they looked really good on the lips. So, and they're like five bucks each, I think. At least they were back then. I don't remember how much I paid this time. Probably five, maybe even seven. Anyway, let's get it on my lips. So we're going for a little <laughs> daytime vampy look today. Um, that's okay. This looks, yeah, I, I like it now just as much as I remember. 
see. I think what I love most about this line of lipsticks is that it is so easy to work with. Um, when I was putting it on just now, I got it like a little too high on my Cupid's bow. Um, and it was so easy to just wipe off and fix my mistake. Love it. You know what? I think I even like this color. I wasn't sure about it at first, but it's really pretty. And it actually, you know what? I don't know why I was nervous. I don't know why I was worried. Everything really came together in the end. The eyes, the blush, the lips. Just maybe not the eyebrows. <laughs> I think overall this was um, a pretty successful venture. This is a no for me. I'm not even going to keep it. This was an eh, okay. Just like the ColourPop one, I think I'll hang on to this um, if I run out of everything else and I need a brow product. This is pretty good. Um, it It's not my first choice. It's not the first thing that I'll be reaching for when doing my eye makeup, but I think this looks pretty dang good. Not bad. Like I was just talking about. Love this. Love this. Really excited to use that more in the spring. This is great. Always has been, always will be. This is pretty great. Um, as I continued applying makeup, I noticed that it kind of was creasing under my eyes. Um, so it is good. It's not my favorite. I think when I run out of my um, Glossier Stretch Concealer, this is going to be a nice little holdover as I'm waiting for my new shipment to come in. But it's good. It's good. Um, and obviously, like, it's a great drugstore price point. Well, that is everything. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching me put all this makeup on. Um, I really, I really liked getting into some old favorites um, and seeing if I still like them or not. If you are so inclined, please subscribe and join me again. I would love to have you back on my channel. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs>